All right. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Sober Yoga Girl. Um, quickly, before we get started, I just want to mention that if you have not yet joined the free Sober Curious Yoga support group on Facebook, started this group a couple of weeks ago. We now have almost a thousand members, which is wild. So make sure you get in there for lots of tips and strategies and support around sobriety and yoga. And on today's episode, I am super, super pumped because I have my good friend Khalid with me today. And Khalid is joining us from Dubai. And I'm going to tell you a little bit of the story of how we met and who he is. And then we're going to learn all about his amazing journey and the work he does now. So welcome, Khalid. How are you? Hey, Alex. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me here. So glad to be here. And so good to see you and hear your voice as well. Nice to see you too. I'm glad that I actually am talking to someone who I can relate to because it's so beautiful how we met. Our past experience of meeting each other is, I, I believe, is really fascinating. So I would go and hold it on to you and you can go ahead with it. <laughs> yeah, the story of how we met, I just think, is like the most wild thing. So... I do this Gabby Bernstein manifestation challenge every January. Well, this is the second time I've done it. And last January when I did it, that was what really kickstarted my whole journey. And it was my first time doing anything related to manifestation. And I was in this headspace where I was like, you know, I really need to build up the mindful life practice so that I can build my business and quit my job. And I really wanted to move to Bali. And so as you guys know, all of that ended up happening last year um, after I started these manifestation practices, which is amazing. And so I went on the Gabby Bernstein Facebook group for this year's challenge and I posted about manifesting moving to Bali. And Khalid commented on my post saying that I had manifested what he is currently manifesting. And so we got to talking, we got to messaging and he told me that he had to go back home. And I said to him, Oh, where's, where's your home? And he said, Dubai. And <laughs> as you guys know, people who have listening or been following my journey, I lived in the UAE for the last five years. And I was actually in Dubai at the moment that Khaled was messaging me. <laughs> so I had gone back to Dubai for Christmas to, you know, sell my things, pack up my life there. And so we met up for coffee and I was talking about our friendship last night in this Zoom yoga class. And I was saying that it was like two souls, like in the wrong city. Like that's what it felt like. Indeed. And yeah. And it was like, I just remember meeting you and it was like this reassurance of like Dubai is not for me anymore because I could feel the contrast in energy in the room of all the, all the people that belonged in Dubai. And then you and I who belong in Bali, you know, and it was just like, um, it was so, it was such a wonderful meeting. And so we hung out all night, we had a great night. And then Khaled ended up offering me a hypnotherapy session. And what, what is it? Is it a future self regression? Is that what it was called? It's, it's called future life progression, where okay. basically you feel and you see and you create a future higher version of yourself through subconscious level in, in, in a time and a further time, which actually what you experienced. Yeah. Oh, it was amazing. So I was talking about this session last night with my, with the people in the yoga class, but I was saying, you know, it was like, so I just had this pivotal epiphany during this hypnotherapy session about the way in which I am running the mindful life practice. And I had been running it from this headspace of like lack and fear and, and stress and constantly worrying about not breaking even and not profiting enough. And I feel like I was, part of me was like destructing parts of the business because I had so mm. much fear around it. Mm -hmm. And Khaled led me through this thing where I ended up realizing like, wow, I don't spend enough time appreciating my team. And, and my team of yoga teachers is like what keeps the whole business going. Like this community would not exist without this team. And I was like, I don't even think I've ever, I've never sent them a gift. I've never appreciated them. And this session completely changed the way that I'm, I'm operating the business. And the business has improved so much since these changes mm -hmm. have been made. And so I just, I just thought it was like the most amazing thing. And so I'm super pumped to bring Khaled here and hear more about his story. And we have a special event coming up, which we'll tell you about later on, but that's kind of, that's kind of our story. 
Amazing, amazing. I'm really looking forward for our event on Sunday, 20th of February, and to meet all mindful life practice community actually over there. And I'm sure it's going to be one of our uh, magical upcoming events uh, for the whole members and for everyone who's joining from anywhere from the world. Yeah, so I posted about it yesterday on Instagram and we've already had 20 people sign up, which is wild. So I had to, I had to increase the amount of space in the class. <laughs> so if anyone's listening and wants to join, I'm going to pop the link um, in the, the episode description. But before we get into that, I want to flip it over to Khaled and kind of hear a little bit about his story. Uh, my story, well, uh, just journey that I'm, I'm into it and how I got into Bali, how I got into um, holistic path and, and be sort of following the spiritual journey. It was back in early 2016 when I was going through accumulated and bundle of traumatic events at once. Like it was, I think it was, it was that time when I when I got a huge call from inside me in order to pursue and start my awakening and self-discovery journey. Basically, that was the first step and telling me in the inner voice inside me to walk into the spirituality and holistic path. I remember, as I said, well, back in early 2016, I, I couldn't lift myself up. I couldn't find my pieces through personal broken relationships got redundant from my new job and lots of lots of like a family issue as well and at the same time as well I was going through lots of mental illness at that time unresolved mental illness which later on I knew that actually it comes from my childhood uh, trauma childhood wounds which I never had the time in order to make peace with it. Not a time, actually, I would say courage, because in order to retouch our inner child and go back to them and see exactly what happened. And in one angle, we had to look into that. I didn't have the courage to do that. And it came in such a huge slap on my face in, in 2016 that I'm like, there, there is something out of it. I this the to unfold my whole journey. I remember I had only one solution in order to get over everything which which was going at once and that was to take off my own life and fortunately due to an unsuccessful attempt of commit suicide that i had to go through it was this call in me and told me khaled you need to get up get your stuff together and very soon you will be celebrating a day like today very soon you will be where you're going to help a lots of guides and lots of souls and many other Khalids with the past or with the similar experiences, similar journeys that you need to lift them up. And I never had this courage again to, to, to listen to myself. And I remember the first holistic modality that I had walked into it, it was the sound, the sound healing meditation. And I'm like, sound, why the sound? I remember after the, the decision, I'm, after a decision, I'm like, why the sound healing? It's like so familiar to my soul that the sound, the vibration, the frequency, which is entering my mind, entering my, but it's like, it's so familiar to the cells, to my muscles, which was trying to harmonize um, the pain actually that I was going through during those times. And the second one, the second uh, holistic modality that was really, really powerful was, was hypnosis. And also right after the hypnosis session that I had at, at that time with my master, bless her heart. And I'm like, whoa, that was it. With one single session, all this, the root causes of my attachment, of the pain that I was going through, of the belief pattern that, that I could never have the courage in order to neutralize them, only one session, like how that's possible. And I did a second session for different topics, third session for different challenges and different issues. And that was a wake up call for me when I'm like, well, I, I want to be a hypnotherapist. I want to make sure that I want to get up not only for myself, but for many other Khaleds with similar experiences, with a similar childhood um, path to bring at least one person light into their soul and help them and guide them in order to heal, heal themselves. And the relationship to myself 
since then it's been a journey, a journey that shaped me and prepared me for who I am today. Again, as a, someone who, uh, who has always been in, in a childhood, um, uh, trauma got lost in domestic abuse and trauma and battle with lots of depression and lots of anxiety and lots of PTSD in my early 20s. These gave me tools in order to transfer it to others and help them and uh, to try and create even a little bit of self revolutionary inside souls, which is around us. Wow. And you know, you have been through so much and thank you for being vulnerable and, and sharing that with us. And I just think it's so true that when you see people like you are like a bright light, like you have this like beautiful energy, which is so like grounded and special. And and I think when sometimes when we meet people like that, we just think that it's like a natural thing that they're born with. And the reality is that like most people who have that type of energy have like been through so much that they've had to overcome and transform and Mm -hmm. to become into the person that they are. And I think you're like the perfect example of that. Like you've been through so much and, and it's turned you into this like resilient and and beautiful person that you are today. Exactly. Thank you. Thank you so much for that, Alex. To be honest, these vulnerabilities and action to seek help were not my weakness at that time, uh, but my strength an evolution over a time that has brought me to where I am today, to be honest. Yeah. I did show up to myself. I found amazing facilitators uh, along the way, amazing people along the way who held lots of compassion and listens for my unfolding. And that what happened a um, year ago, I felt inspired to do the same, to be a facilitator, to be a guide, to be a light worker for souls who are in the same process of self, self-revolution. And this is what made me to get inspired and book my ticket. And after actually lots of other unsuccessful events, <laughs> which you know about that, in order to go to land in Bali, uh, about a year and a half ago, where I, I thought actually my place, my soul is belong to other place. I, I had a job offer in order to go to Germany. Actually, I was all over the moon in order to start my new chapter, my new life in Germany. Uh, it took me six months running like a headless chicken, trying to figure out everything, get the visa sorted out, uh, learn the language, pass the language test, open a bank account, make a connection, book an accommodation, and, and, and. And I sold everything that in Dubai. I, I, I grew up in Dubai, so imagine how much stuff that I had there. <laughs> yeah. I, I sold everything, and it was me two suitcases, sitting on a sofa uh, at my brother's place. And I remember just four days right before my plane to take off to go to Germany, they closed the borders because of the pandemic. And I couldn't believe at that time that that was happening. I'm like, no, no, come on, universe, God, whoever you're on top of my head trying to do whatever you do, you, <laughs> you can't do this to me right four days before actually I've been running for whole of this process for six months, trying to get where I have always dreamed of. No, 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 no. We need to slow down. I need to get there. I have to get there. I remember I knocked every door trying to get there. I, I, I got in touch with embassies, with any governmental entities, try, I'm like, guys, I have a work visa. This is my accommodation. This is a bank account. This is insurance, everything trying to get there, but it, it, ne- it never happened. Never happened until downward six months later on when my visa got expired. They weren't even issuing their new visa. And I was devastated. I was devastated. I'm like, that's my, that was my plan A. It still it was my plan A at that time, trying to get there. I'm like, what was inside this, the whole scenario that the plane, that plane never took off? For me, but after running like a pursuing the dreams that I've always had in order to go, because right before that, I've, I did went to Europe quite a lot and I had traveled Germany several times and I was my decision. I'm like, um, I feel I belong there. And I'm like, okay, the plan B, maybe it's Dubai. Maybe it's time to keep staying in Dubai. 
And that as will never happen. I keep going to job interviews, passing on my CV as someone who grew up in Dubai and has a lot of connection, going to the second round or even last round of interview. And then like, sorry, Mr. Bayad, you couldn't make it. Or they chose another individual or they, they freeze the position or anything. I remember that was a time. I mean, Bali and to pursue my holistic um, path, it was my plan C. I knew in, like right in, in, in deep into my heart, I had to go that path, but I didn't have that push. I didn't have that courage to listen to my inner voice. Mm -hmm. And I knew that back in 2016, when I went through all those dramatic events, I meant to not only to heal myself, but help others to heal themselves as yeah. well. But where was the, the the attention to that inner voice there it wasn't there i wasn't listening to it like i was getting a slap from left and right and bless my 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 best friend who i consider her my soulmate as well she's like Khaled, you're blind you always wanted to be a therapist you always wanted to be a spiritual coach you always wanted to be a hypnotherapist you healed yourself through so many of traumatic yeah. events for many years through sound healing through hypnosis through nlp i was like no just give me two more weeks one more month i'm still waiting for other interviews i'm still waiting for other companies to get back to me and it never happened i was i hit my knees asking universe i'm like drop me sign although at that time alex i knew like inside myself i had to pursue bali i had mm. to go there because things were lined up for me however i hit my knees and i asked universe i'm like drop me something i gave up drop me something showing me that i have to pursue that two days later on coming back again from one of those unsuccessful interviews entering my my lift coming back to my apartment and i was tired it was midday and a, a delivery guy a food delivery guy entered lift with me and usually I, I was so tired in order to try to pay attention to what kind of bag or what kind of food he's delivering in my building. When I looked at the bag, it was written on a, a little Bali, a little Bali restaurant. I'm like, oh my God. Like it hit me so hard. It resonated so hard. I'm like, as someone who grew up in, 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 in Dubai, I don't know many Indonesian, I don't know any actually Indonesian restaurants in None. Dubai. I'm sure you don't either. None. And this exactly. is, you told me this story at Christmas and, and I <laughs> thought it was so funny because I was like, I cannot tell you one Indonesian restaurant in the entire country of the UAE. <laughs> exactly. And, I'm like, yeah. well, how is this possible? Mm -hmm. And that hit me so hard. Even the delivery guy, he he noticed that actually I keep staring at, at the, the food bag. And he looked at me in a way, Alex, you cannot imagine. I'm getting goosebumps now that I'm telling you this. The way he looked at me, there was a message in his eyes. Wow. There was a message in his eyes telling me, pursue that. What you saw on my bag, it's actually accurate. Go after that. And I remember I, when I, I, I opened my, my apartment door, I had to go under blanket because it was like, it, it, the feeling was weird. I have no words actually to describe it. I'm like, what is that sound? What, what, what that came up with? Why, a, why I'm scared at the same time, excited at the same time, I have fear feeling like going rash of this weird feeling over my body. And I told my best friend, I'm like, this is what happened. She, just, <laughs> she was looking for that opportunity. She's like, Khaled, see, I told you that. I told you that. <laughs> and that was actually the time. And I, I got received many other messages as well, like opening YouTube and seeing people are moving out of, out of different countries, pursuing yeah. their dreams, going to Bali. And that was the time I, I just picked up the phone and I called my agent in Bali. I'm like, please proceed my v process my visa as soon as you can and i remember when i landed in bali literally two days later they closed the borders wow. uh, to international flights and i'm like whoa all of this just for me in order show like it showed to my soul that i have to be where i am right now mm -hmm. and i couldn't 
describe how joyful that moment was for me, how my soul was like, thank you, Khaled, for bringing me where I am. Thank you. That's because that really resonates. And that word led me that today to go and cert- be certified as a holistic and transpersonal hypnotherapist, as a sound healer, as an NLP coach, and not bragging, but I couldn't be more proud of myself, to be honest. God, I just got shivers. I just got goosebumps. And, you know, I think your and I story is really parallel um, in that I went through this period of time where I was trying really hard to hold on to UAE, hold on, hold on, hold on. And, Mm -hmm. you know, I quit my job. I started my business. I moved into an apartment. I literally was buying new furniture, got the, got curtains for the apartment, was like setting everything up and like everything was going wrong. Like, you know, visa wouldn't properly come through. Apartment wasn't ready on the right day. Um, Then like the business started to go downhill. Like the business was not going well. And I feel like some, I was on this, my friend's podcast. And she was saying that like, when everything is going wrong, it's a sign that like the universe is about to up level and things are going to change. And there is like another direction. And I feel like you went through that same thing of like so many things going wrong and so many doors closing and it was all Hmm. happening on purpose, right. To lead you to, to Bali. Indeed. Indeed. And it led me to a place where I was there for six months and I'm going back um, to Bali very soon again. And (laughs) and I remember every person that I met in this journey, um, I felt like they're tailored and customized to my own journey as well. It's crazy before going to Bali, a good friend of mine who experienced living in Bali for about a year, he he came to me, told me that, Khaled, when you go to Bali, when you're on a right path, doesn't matter. It can be Bali, it can be Dubai, it can be Germany or anywhere else. But when you're on the right path and when you know where your soul has to be, you will meet people that you feel they're exactly customized and tailored to your journey, to your personality, to your path. And I met amazing souls in, in Bali that not they're only like a very, very close friend of mine, but I consider them as my extended family. Yeah. And when these things like unfold slowly, slowly, piece by piece, then you will realize this is where you're meant to be. Yeah. Because at that time, again, when I was in Dubai, I won. I never listened to my inner voice because I knew something there was telling me to go to this path. Two, I never knew how to surrender. And I think the moment that I hit my knees and I had to surrender and that, that miracle happened magically. And because lots of us, we believe like surrendering is giving up, but however, surrendering is giving over to. And that was my mm-hmm. moment when I, the moment I gave over to the universe, to my higher source, I'm like, that's yours. And I, all I need, all I'm asking is just drop me sign, knowing that if that journey of this journey or upcoming journey, any journey, which is resonates with my soul. And this is where I really ended up. Oh, that's so amazing. It's so, it's so incredible. So Thank tell you. me about, okay, so you do NLP, you do hypnosis, you do um, sound healing. I know a bit about sound healing and hypnosis because I've experienced them. NLP, I would love to learn more about, but I would also love, I'm sure the whole audience would just want to know, like, tell us about these things. What do you do? Long question. <laughs> long question. A long question. Well, um, in hypnosis, Actually, hypnosis, where we, we do hypnosis on different individuals, you go into deep, deep state of relaxation until your brain reaches the theta state. Once we reach that state, we access directly the subconscious mind. This is where all our learned behaviors, all patterns, all beliefs, all systems, and most important thing, a lot of childhood ones, and a lot of trauma has been restored there, which mm-hmm. we don't have really courage to go and access them and make peace with it. In hypnotherapy, when we reach the theta brain state, the subconscious mind is the most impressionable and gets completely activated during the session. We give that tremendous opportunity uh, to the subconscious mind to be receptive 
for positive suggestions and for also new perspective towards the, those traumatic events and those current challenges that we are going now through in order to rewire and rewrite the program. And this is where actually, this is how I heal my childhood wound. I had to go deep down in my childhood wound, in my childhood trauma, and see actually what was the reason behind all these things that happened to me. Mm -hmm. Why I never could make peace with it. And through the hypnosis, we go right access that. Basically, I want to say we sort of manipulate the subconscious mind, but everything is restored there, but in a good way. In a way that right after the session, you know that, okay, that had happened to me because of that certain reason. And this is, right. I had that old pattern of belief. I cut the pattern and now I have a belief system which is running through me, through a subconscious mind. And this actually where lots of blockages just get removed. Lots of blockages just get neutralized in, right. in our daily life. And I believe it's, it's a very powerful tool in order for us to not only reach to the point where we get the within inner, but also it's amplify our manifestation and power to get through something. Because a lot of our old belief, old pattern, and lots of our childhood trauma and blockages to the new, new reality that we want to access. We don't know consciously, we don't know. But subconsciously, we do know these blockages come from the past events. These blockages, there are memories are stored in our subconscious mind. We don't know how to access it. We don't know how to process it. That we know the moment that we neutralize that, we release them, we get into that reality shift. Mm -hmm. wow. And with NLP, usually, um, I give NLP. NLP basically is neurolinguistic programming where you, you reshape, you rewire the yeah. language of your, of your brain through conscious level, not subconscious level. So we do the hypnosis and right after the session of the hypnosis, we go, okay, now we work deeply with your subconscious mind. How about now we work with your conscious mind? I love that. This is where NLP comes into the play. Yeah. And when we combine these two together, what, this is where the magic happens. And it, it creates a lot of uh, grounding, balancing, a lot, lots of new realizations. And with the session that I had with you, which we went through future life progression, yeah. I remember when you came out of the trance, when you came out of the, the hypnosis, you said, oh, I got this idea that I had to do this to my stuff, or I had to send that email or yeah. do this. Or. Yeah. And this is because it, it is in subconscious level. Consciously, you didn't know, but subconsciously you did. And you had to go to that state in yeah. order to bring up that realization. And I, I believe it's, it's a very, very powerful tool for individual to rediscover themselves from within. Yeah. Oh my goodness. It was so, so powerful. So I've had two different hypnosis um, experiences and I think I might've told you the first story of how I ended up in hypnosis was um, because I was going through a traumatic event and I called looking for Reiki and the Reiki mm. healer wasn't there. And I said, okay, is there angel cards? Angel card healer wasn't there. And then I was like, okay, who's there? And they said, our hypnotherapist I was like, okay, I'm coming. <laughs> and um, that was incredibly transformative because I was going through this traumatic event where I was like, had worried that someone was, um, was, you know, villainizing me. And, um, and in the session, I was guided into talk with her. And it, she said to me, I'm sorry, I couldn't protect you from this. And I went to meet this person in, in real life. And um, it was basically that I had ended up in like an abusive, abusive relationship with someone who was, you know, 20 years older than me. And, and she was kind of one of the older people involved. And that was the first thing she said to me, I'm sorry, you couldn't, I couldn't protect you from this. And I just cried. Like it was like the most powerful thing. And so then when I met you, I said, you know, I don't really have any trauma that I'm healing. I don't really have any past stuff. And then you suggested this future self thing. And oh my God, I can't even describe to you. Like I just, you said to me, you know, imagine you're 10 years from now or something like this. You're looking at your team. What are you saying to them? And I, I was like expressing my gratitude. And then I was like, oh my God, why the F am I not doing that right now? Why am I not doing that right now? <laughs> like what? 
the heck is wrong with me? And, and it shifted me into this mindset of like, this is not about me. Like, I think I thought my company mm. was about me, but it's not mm. about me. It's about me lifting up and inspiring the other people in my company. It's me being a leader. Mm. The thing that someone said to me the other week is like, you're not, the conductor of the orchestra doesn't play all the instruments, you know, Indeed, and, and that's what it is. It's like, I need to step exactly. into this leadership, this elevated leadership position. If I want the business to go to the next level. And I don't think I would have gotten there had I not had that session with you. And so I really think, you know, we were meant to meet and it's, it's transformed how things are happening now. Indeed, indeed. And I'm, I'm so glad that it had such a beautiful effect on you and also on the mindful life practice community where I believe with every event, with every, I don't want to call that incident, but it's, it's, it's nothing without a meaning. Mm -hmm. And the fact that we could meet and I had to learn a lot about a mind, a life or practice community. And I had to, you had to learn about the hypnosis. It's where universe called us and like, like, see, when you surrender, this is what I'm going to give it to you. You may not get what you want, mm -hmm. but you will get what you need. And this is what always we forget that yeah. we think what we want is our best, but we don't know what we do need. For that. So true. I needed I needed to know about mindful life practice community. You needed to know about sound healing, about hypnosis. And I think that's a beautiful thing. And I'm so glad that today I'm here and I'm sharing with you. Yeah. And so Khaled and I, since we met, we've been talking about doing something together. And I'm super excited about the event that we have coming up. So we're going to be co-teaching a, a manifestation yin and hypnotic meditation. And so I'm going to do the first part. We're going to do a little bit of journaling and some yin poses. And then it's going to be passed over to Khaled. And Khaled, do you want to tell us a bit about what you're going to be offering during that session? Perfect. Actually, I'm really looking forward for that session. And we are going to have 20 minutes immersion of mind, body and soul, actually, uh, what I'm going to try with hypnosis to take you through a deep journey through hypnotic meditation that would elevate your sense, amplify your manifestation power and soothe the soul. And basically here we're going to familiarize the, the yin practice and everything through all the session with muscles and cells through a sort of a sensation that uh, mm -hmm. we are going to create in this meditation and showing to everyone, whoever is uh, attending all the audience, that actually the power is within you. And we are just here to guide you to get what you want, get what you desire. Actually. And I'm really, really looking forward to that. That's going to be amazing. Oh, I'm so, so excited. I'm just excited to experience like another session with you. I think it's going to be phenomenal. Thank you. I hope so. And I hope uh, I'm really looking forward to uh, meet all mindful life practice community and whoever is participating there. Yeah. Awesome. And another thing that we're also going to be setting up soon is um, Khaled is going to be available for people to book one-on-one -on -one private hypnotherapy and NLP sessions, uh, similar to what I did with him um, that I told the story about. And that's going to be on the Mindful Life Practice. So it's going to be already popped in this episode description. So if anyone is interested, um, you can click the link and learn more and, um, and book a one-on-one -on -one with Khaled. Amazing. Looking forward to have whoever needs any guidance, a safer space in order to we go through different events. Um, always here and happy to help. Amazing. Oh, this was such an incredible episode. And I really loved chatting with you and reconnecting with you. And um, soon, I just, I remember you were saying like, a couple of weeks ago, you weren't sure if you were coming back to Bali. And I was like, you're coming. Like, I just picture us just hanging out here, <laughs> like, <laughs> hanging out, going to Zest, having our vegan food. So I'm really I know. I, I remember when soon. I was keep asking you, I was keep asking you some questions and here and there about logic and I don't know, some stuff you're like, Khaled, stop asking me questions. Habibi, you're coming. I'm like, whoa, <laughs> that was a big hit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, it'll be amazing. Really looking forward to it. All right. Well, have a lovely rest of your day and uh, we'll chat soon.
Thank you, Alex. Thank you so much for having me here. I'm really looking forward to um, contribute and participate more in this beautiful community and be just a little help for whoever needs guidance, whoever needs um, in order to self-discover through his or her journey. Thank you. Thank you again. Thank you.